Hello you lovely lot and welcome to another video. My name's Katie and today we're gonna have a look at some handmade watercolours. Now I do apologise but this video has been a bit of a long time in the making. I did actually film it a while back but never got round to editing it so here it is. So a few months back we had an upgrade to some handmade watercolours by Scrim. And within our Upcrate box, we also had a discount coupon, which I think it gave us 10% off or something like that. It, it's ages ago now, I can barely remember. I was so charmed by these little handmade paint samples that I thought I'd visit their website and check out what other goods they have to offer. Now, I do already have some handmade paints by a crafted maker named Quartz, and I got them off Etsy a couple of years ago. So I thought perhaps purchasing some more handmade watercolours from Scrim might just be a nice addition to the collection there. I picked up three very subtle pans. I picked up Scrim Green Go Goblin, Scrim Blue and Scrim Hollow. And these kind of stood out from the rest. I didn't particularly want to have to duplicate colours I already had. I wanted something a little different brought to the table. I've never used holographic glitter watercolour before so that went in the basket and the blue and the green well they have a little bit of a twist to them. They when exposed to a good amount of light are supposed to glow in the dark so I thought well that's interesting let's see what I can do. Now the picture that you see going on in the background, I'll be honest with you, I'm not 100% happy with how it turned out, however it did serve as a good vessel to try these new paints. And thus allow me to give you a good opinion on how they perform. I mean it's all very well and good swatching them, but actually using them in a context of a piece of artwork, that is a different experience entirely. The first impressions of swatching them though was the glow in the dark ones really, really, really took a long time to activate. I am not kidding you. I'd let the water soak on them for a good while as you do with watercolour pans and yeah, it still felt as hard as a rock and I did have to use a lot of, a lot of willpower and pressure with the brush to try and get those paint particles moving in the suspension that it was in. Upon swatching they felt very grainy and it was quite an uneven coverage. Now this isn't anything bad against Scrim, I can imagine using different pigment types has its ups and its downs and maybe for the glow in the dark stuff that's just the nature of it. And I guess as well, to make it adhere to the paper, you've got to have something pretty solid there, otherwise it's going to crumble off. However, with the holographic watercolour, not quite so much of a struggle to try and get those particles moving into a paintable form. I did notice though that they were very grainy to paint with, and I don't mean in a granulating sense. I mean, it felt like there were chunks of sand in there and obviously for the glitter, the particles are bigger. There's only so far you can go with that. And I guess the same could apply for the glow in the dark, but the glow in the dark stuff just was not pleasant to paint with. I don't think using them as a watercolor and building up layers is the way to go with it, in my opinion anyway. And it is more for pretty much using neat and adding embellishments with it. Now, again, this is a while ago since I filmed this, but I paid about £15 per pan. It might be a little bit less. And obviously I had the discount coupon. So I was, I'll be honest with you, a little bit disappointed. And again, I don't think it's actually Scrim's fault. I actually just think if that's the type of paint you wanna use, and I don't think it matters where you get it from, and that all is speculating there. But I think just because of the nature of the pigments and the fact you're gonna need a good solid binder to hold it onto your page, that probably contributes to why it was hard to activate and hard to spread around on the page. Now on a, again, 
a general opinion of mine with regards to handmade watercolours, they are going to differ from your mass-produced ones from your favourite brands out there. They're all produced on a smaller scale, so there are going to be slight variations within texture and, I guess, movement across the page. The, they are handmade, so they're not going to be muled by a machine. It's going to be a person doing that, and that is part of the charm. However, in my experience, I do find it quite a different painting experience. I tend to find you have to put a little bit more work in there to try and get those colours to behave how you would expect them to. And again, this isn't necessarily a criticism of the places where I bought these paints from, but these are things to take into consideration there. Some colours, although might seem incredibly vibrant in the pan, as soon as you add water to them and place them upon a page, is completely different. And that's okay, it's just how these work and once you learn these facts about these materials, you can adapt it to your working style. Anyway, I've just realised we're six minutes in and I haven't actually spoken about this picture, so I thought I'd do a underwater sea dragon type creature here. I thought that would be perfect to represent the glow in the dark properties of those paints. I did actually probably go a little bit too far with some of the details on here and like I mentioned at the start of the video, I'm not 100% pleased with how this turned out. That's okay, I'm kind of okay sharing work with you which I'm not 100% happy with and going into why, I don't think that is a bad practice as an artist to reflect on pieces that you've done because ultimately that leads to you improving in your future pieces. Although I liked what I sketched out, I personally think maybe gouache probably would have been a better medium here, but hey, we live and we learn, don't we? I was eager to try these paints out and this was a good vessel to do that with. I wanted to use the metallics that I got from the upcrate box with the scrim featured in there, as well as the metallics I already had from the quartz handmade watercolours. I think, especially with your metallic based paints, I tend not to enjoy using them as a watercolour as such, and again, just using it for details and embellishment. And I think probably because I went a little bit overboard there, a lot of those details perhaps just got lost in the busyness of it all. In fact, so much so, I had to give everything a good outline just to make it stand out. And again, I think it improved it slightly, but I still don't think it did it many favours there. Again, it just contributed to overly working a piece. And I think it was really just a case of I want to throw all the mediums I've got that I handmade onto this picture without really giving it much thought and consideration. But that's okay, I at least got to know these materials a little bit better and at least how not to use them in the future. So let's talk about the holographic glitter paint for a moment. Again, that was a little easier to activate and I guess that's that's just how it is. I wouldn't say it was as easy to use as the mica-based metallics, again, different particle sizes, but I did actually quite like the hollow payoff. Would that be the right term there? It's not technically a colour payoff, so yeah, we'll go with hollow payoff. It was as even as it could be. It was more even in my opinion compared to the glow in the dark ones. And it did actually add quite a nice little bit of extra texture on there, which stood out from the regular metallics below. When it did dry, and again, I did apply it quite thickly. There wasn't a noticeable raise in texture on the paper. It didn't leave these big physical lumps on the page or anything. It did eventually settle down quite well, which I was quite happy about. I also did a bit of a smudge test with my swatches off camera. I tend to like to run a finger across them to see how well those pigments stick to the page. And yes, I'll give it that. My other watercolours, the quartz ones, some of them do smudge off the page and I guess that's probably down to there perhaps not being enough binder in there or perhaps it's not been muled for as long and obviously those particles will come loose. And that's something to take into consideration there when using handmade watercolours. Also, the paper you use is a contributing factor as well as to how your paints are going to perform. I used a Stonehenge Hot Press 100% cotton 
for this and obviously that's not going to highlight those textures in there quite as well but again this was a learning experience it might have come out completely differently if I'd used a different paper or a different subject matter with not quite so much detail and embellishment in there. As you've just witnessed, the glow-in-the-dark paint actually goes down pretty transparent, or at least as transparent as it can, so you'll have seen the areas I've embellished there, and obviously it's time for the glittery stuff, and again, the binder itself doesn't stand out, it's just those flecks of glitter that catch the light. So let's draw up a conclusion with these scrim paints. Were they worth it? For me personally, I kind of regret buying them, if I'll be honest with you. I like the glittery one, I like the concept of the glow-in-the-dark stuff, however, it really did have its drawbacks for a painting experience. They were not cheap, and I expected them to perform better whilst painting. Once I'd finally got them activated, I did find that I was using quite a lot of the stuff just to try and get some decent level of glow on there and I found myself having to reapply just to make sure that it stood out. The end result is interesting. I don't hate it, but I, I don't particularly like the picture I've done anyway here. Again, it's just a vessel to demonstrate. The blue doesn't glow as much as the green, which can make the green overpower the final image too. However, I am glad I got to try them and I probably won't buy any more glow-in-the-dark paint again. But of course, let me know what you guys think down below. Just want to say thank you as always for watching. There's some more on screen now I think you're going to enjoy. And I'll see you lovely lot soon. Bye!